Uh, Reverend Stewart, you spoke of the federal vision as being along the same lines as Cardinal Satellite and the new perspective on Paul. There are no denominations or churches titled, quote, Federal Vision Reform Church, against which we can warn our children, young people, and members. In which denominations specifically are the teachings of the federal vision found? Um, my point with respect to Cardinal Satellite was that he used the phrases faith alone and also Christ alone to deceive the unwary. And I used that as an example of the procedure of people in the federal vision and the new perspective on Paul. The new perspective on Paul arose out of higher critical circles, people who uh, attacked the inerrancy of the Holy Scripture and arose out of syncretistic interests to try and win back the Jews to a more favorable view of Christianity and ecumenical interests. Well, out of this new perspective of Paul, largely has come the federal vision, moving now not so much from higher critical circles, but to Presbyterian and Reformed circles. Professor Engels now explained the federal vision, so I'll take that as, as known. Now, there is one denomination that is federal vision. It is the Confederation of Reformed Evangelical Churches, the CREC. They are based in Moscow, Idaho, and you may have heard of their pastor and a leading movement, a leading figure is Doug Wilson. So these Muscovites from Moscow, Idaho, not Russia, are spreading their evil empire, I think that was the phrase used by Ronald Reagan, throughout the world. There are three churches in this denomination, uh, at least in Michigan. There are a number of them, I'm guessing maybe 50 or so in the United States, including Alaska, some in Canada, one in Japan, few in Russia, three I think in Poland, one in Hungary, and they're making an effort especially in Eastern Europe. So that's a denomination. And then there are other individuals, ministers, elders, members, some of whom have been charged with or brought before church assemblies in various, especially North American denominations, including the OPC, PCA and the URC. I'm not going to say how, how many people, their relative strengths and weaknesses there because I don't know, but I know there is at least some influence there. And the other major stream, to say no more, comes through a man called Norman Shepherd, who taught at Westminster Theological Seminary in the East. And he was there from the 1970s, big disciplinary case that rumbled on for many years. That man taught many students in various denominations throughout the world. In fact, I know of a man who's a minister from Poland, comes to our meetings in Wales, and the federal vision affected him, his personal friends, and the denomination with which he was associated. So it is a, an evil empire that spreads, and you do well in the Protestant Reformed churches to have, especially Professor Engels, a <coughs> warning against it, and the Covenant of God and the Children of Believers is the main book, and there's a little pamphlet, the, oh, the little blue one, Professor, the little one, the Unconditional Covenant in Contemporary Debate, there you are, finished. Thank you. Anyone further? trying to keep the answers brief and we're doing a pretty good job of it because we still have about four-fifths of what we have here. Uh, Reverend Connors, I'll direct this one to you. In his institutes, Calvin speaks of God's secret counsel and will, but also of his revealed will in the law. It seems to me, it seems that by Calvin's writing, God has two wills. I know this is not to be, uh, this not to be true because of the Protestant Reformed preaching I have heard, 
The question is, how do we understand this teaching of Calvin? I direct it to you because predestination was your speech. Yes, that's a helpful question. Uh, Cal Calvin in his institutes uh, makes it quite clear that God has but one will. Uh, there is uh, a God, uh, let's put it in the uh, setting it needs to be, God is a one undivided volitional <coughs> being. A God's will is not separate from him. It is the uh, unchanging God who wills. Uh, so God's will uh, is his decree, his eternal counsel, is what God himself wills to do. So God, according to that eternal counsel, sets forth his will of precept, which is the command that he gives to us, so that the revealed will of God, which we have in Scripture, which is the command to which we must submit, uh, falls, as it were, as a proposition under the living will of God and is one of the means by which God himself fulfills his own will. So there's but one will of God, but he has revealed his will for us, which is our command. So that's the way uh, I believe Calvin actually uh, works that through. It becomes a little confusing in some places in the Institutes because uh, he uses the word will of God, or the phrase will of God, uh, both with respect to the decree and also with respect to the precept. But nevertheless, as you read the whole of his construct, uh, he has but one will, one volition of God, and God, according to that will, has given his command to us. So that would be my answer. Thank you. Anyone add to that? Uh, here's one for Reverend Stewart, but I think it perhaps applies to a number of the speeches. Did Calvin distinguish between eternal and temporal justification? Did he reveal a personal preference for either? Do you have a personal preference for either? I'm not adding, I'm reading. Do you think that debating over, the, over whether justification is temporal or eternal is superfluous? Could justification be both temporal and eternal. You have 30 seconds. <laughs> of all the places to be in North America and perhaps the world where I'm currently seated may be the most dangerous. I'm between two men who probably have a pretty big stake in this. <laughs> and they're both a lot bigger than I and older and <laughs> So my answer, since I've only a few seconds left, is to probably suggest that you ask the two men my right <laughs> <laughs> Would anyone like to add to that? <laughs> hmm. That's a big question. There are differences uh, among the speakers on that point, but what I would consider, uh, although strong differences, friendly differences. But if anyone would like to uh, take a half of a minute or a minute or two, they're welcome to.